Hey, Battle Pirates people. So, this is part three of the beginner series. And there's something on my shirt. Okay, it's off. Nothing a good flick will take care of. So, uh, this is basically day two for me, and after about three or four days, I will not remember which days are which. So, what I did since last time was I added a new warehouse, took it to level seven, upgraded the Intel lab so that I can use the strike missiles that we picked up from the campaigns the other day. I did tier one of the Forsaken missions. So what, okay, here's a good thing. What are Forsaken missions? They are basically an every week mission, every week event, except for the weeks that monthly events are happening, okay? So these are basically three out of the four weeks per month. And you, you hit the circle thingies, these military strongholds, and from those you get points and you can get points all the way up to four and a half million. Uh, at the levels we're at right now, you're not <laughs> going to get four and a half million. Well, it would be very, very difficult, and I do not quite have the fleets yet to do that, but I want to get them pretty soon. So, but I did get up to 150,000, and that took, I don't know, a couple hours. But you have three days. You have three days to work it. I only spent a couple hours on it, and I got to 150,000. So, you know, it's... It's probably possible I probably make, could have made it two or three. I just wanted to sort of dink around with it. You get some cool stuff in here now. You, this is actually, uh, most people are going to uh, talk a lot about the monthly events, but until you get bigger, the weekly events are what you really care about, these Forsaken missions. You really want to get to the point where you can get to Tier 4 before you should really be caring much about the monthly events. Okay. Because there's ships in here, there's guns in here, there's base guns in here. Okay, not a whole lot of ships this week, but that, that's a good ship right there. Um, that's a good ship right there. And so there, there's, a, there's some other good stuff in here. This is a good thing to have. Um, that's good. This is good, which is what I picked up. So... Uh, those are those are that's part of the Forsaken mission. Once you do it, you got three days to do it. So do, and starts on Wednesday. I don't know exactly when it ends, but you better not start it less than three days before it's going to end, because otherwise your timer is not really your timer. The other thing people keep asking about in here is where are mines? Mines are at the Draconian bases. These are the big honking things. I gotta find one. Hold on, let me zoom out. This is how you find stuff in this game. You zoom out. It probably should be right here. Why is it not right here? How come I'm not seeing any forsaken bases? I mean, uh, draconian outposts. There they are. Okay, draconian base. Woo! It's going nuts for a second. These are mines. They, if you kill them, they give you predominantly a specific type of resource. So this one gives you energy, this one gives you metal, this one gives you the Z word, which I've always been told I say that incorrectly, and there's a oil one, and a, I don't know, whatever. That's probably about it. Uh, they're probably asking because it's in this, this thingy right here. This, the objectives, it's probably because it's in here. Uh, don't bother with them. They, they cause you a lot more damage than the amount of resources you're going to get. Cargo. Cargo. Is where you're going to get resources. Do cargo. Alright. So that's that. Um, oh, I finished five of these. Some mortar ships. Kind of cool. These are diplomatic mortar twos with engine ones. Using the fancy maulers. Which only armor games people get. Uh, and I have my missile ones. And I've been ranking them up. Okay, here's something you need to know. <clears throat> Ranking up ships, what does that do? Besides getting a little yellow crap up here. It does two things for you. If you can see, I can still click on and see too. Okay, if you see, you get bonuses for ranking it. Right now, with this rank, which is a level 4, I get a 20% bonus in firing speed for any gun on the ship. And I get a 20% bonus in turning speed, so I turn faster. Tidbit of knowledge you need to know. 
There's two types of speed in combat. There's combat speed and there's turning speed. If your turning speed is a lot slower than your combat speed, what happens is you're really going to slow down when you go to turn. So, if turning speed is good. Firing speed is very good. The maximum that this will go up to is 75%. That's really, really good for this game. Okay. So, ranking up is, is a very good thing to do. It's based off of the, the, the amount of damage that you do to ships, and it's based off the amount of damage your ship receives. There's a maximum that you can get per engagement. Uh, we'll cover all that another day. Just notice that ranking is good. All right, so let's do campaign number two. Oh, shoot, I did that at work today. Never mind, I didn't do it at work. I did it, you know, in my off time. I thought I was going to do that tonight. Okay, we're not doing that tonight. I can't do this one yet. Okay, scratch that. <laughs> I'm not doing that. So, that campaign number two is very, very, very similar to campaign number one. The only difference is they're not coming at you with mortars, which was that was in campaign number one. In campaign two, they're coming at you with shorter range guns. So, in all reality, if you do the kiting method, where you stay out in front, and let's go do a kiting method, just so, oop, the ship's already out there. Let's go find something. Let's do something, let's do a 17. 17, I'll probably get shot at. Um, but we're still gonna, we're still gonna kite. Just so, this is a fundamental part of, of how this game basically works. Up arrow, click, kind of pack them all in together. And somebody's already been working on this one a little bit. That's okay. Unidentified raiding fleets. You don't really care about them yet. You're too small to kill anything. People do them because it helps rank faster. That's why they do them. Pull them again. I think this range of this gun is shorter than this range of this gun is going to be. But we'll find out. See how I'm turning away, so I'm staying on that maximum edge. Oh, it was that gun. Okay. Okay. So he, he, he actually had enough range on me. So, ooh, nice. Okay, that's a blueprint. You get blueprints from killing cargo. The blueprint is not the gun itself. A blueprint is the right to make a gun. And when you kill cargo, you don't get an entire blueprint. You get a piece of a blueprint. Blueprints are seen in Intel Labs. So you can see right here, there's one of six. I just picked up the actuator control. You don't really care which piece is which, you just care that you have one of six, right? So, um, repair, speed up, aha, very nice. So what I'm building now is I'm building a Battle Barge A with the strike missiles that I got in the campaign. I have a laser targeter, too, and I was researching earlier the solid fuel booster, and I research the solid fuel booster one, that makes the range of the missiles further out. Four, uh, three is the best, but three we can't do for a while. Um, I also, oh, I was still upgrading. I'm upgrading the outpost because I want to upgrade the Intel Lab. The Intel Lab I upgraded already to five. I did the research for the Rapier missile because four, number four, because that was a prerequisite to use a strike missile. The strike missile's prerequisites were the Intel Lab had to be three and I had to have Rapier missiles four. So I went ahead and accomplished my prerequisites, so this was now usable. So now when I go to um, build something, it's an option for me now. So, And I picked up the Leviathan A. It's a nice little ship. Um, five weapons, three armors, two specials. Pretty good, pretty good. 
Um, picks up a good amount of cargo. So far, all of my fleets as an entire fleet only pick up about half this. So that's that's good, pretty good cargo. Um, repair modifier 75% means it's cheaper to repair than what they classify as a normal ship. Okay, all of the all of the smaller ships have good repair modifiers. The subs and some of the uh, other ships might have negative re or bad repair modifiers. All right. So, what else was I hearing about today, and that you need to know? One of my goals, what I'm working towards, is by the time our bubble comes down, I want to see if we can have level 3 or level 4 Sentinel missiles, and probably level 4 Howies. Somewhere in there. That's kind of what I'm happening on. I'm not going to worry about Flak yet, or Bombard, or Victory Mortar, or Cerebus. Uh, but, let's go and talk about what they are. Howitzer Cannons. These are ballistic shells. They shoot out little yellow ballistics. They only hit one thing at a time. The other class of weapon is the Serb. The Serb is the other short range weapon. And this weapon shoots uh, a, a, a spread of rockets. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to hit all five fleets at the same time. It has a shorter range. Oops. It has a shorter range than a Howie. Um, but it's, it throws out way more damage. Heavy ballistic defense ships might just ignore these and keep moving. Very few ships in the game can ignore these. But they're very short range, so you can kill them at a distance. Okay. Bombard rockets. These shoot down mortars. So if you're trying to hit the base of mortars, this is going to try to shoot it down. And here's the thing. These are one for one. If this guy shoots... Salvo 12. Each one has a 70% probability of shooting a mortar out of the sky. If that one misses, other ones will not try. Okay, That's important because other things that shoot mortars out of the sky don't work that way. Flak. Flak shoots missiles out of the sky. Okay, Doesn't work the same way. This works kind of like flak in that it's an area of effect weapon. If you, when it hits a missile in a short little area, any missile in that area is going to get destroyed. So if your ships are all packed together and they all fire one big burp and they're all, all the missiles are packed together, one flak shot could wipe them all out in one volley. So, we will talk about later how do you deal with that. You can stagger your ships a little bit so you fire as a stream instead of as a burp. Okay. Victory mortar. They're mortars. They fire mortars. They have a nice long range and they will hurt all the ships that they hit. They have a splash and stuff, so that's important. Uh, Sentinel missiles. They only hit one ship at a time, but they do a pretty decent amount of damage and um, they got a really good range. Okay. Early, early into the game, Sentinel Missiles is one of those, as a surefire, you're going to get hit by them. Uh, whereas most of everything else, you have the potential to not get hit by. You can go faster than the mortars. You can stop before you get to the Howies and before you get to the Serbs. You cannot stop before you get to missiles. Missiles will fire before you fire. And they will target you and they will hit you. So early in the game, I like Sentinel Missiles. Later into the game, not so much. Um, okay, so what should... Let me pause for a second. Let me think about it. Ah, okay. Let's look at... Since we were talking about the Forsaken Missions, why don't we go play with the Forsaken Mission? Okay. Uh, I'm kind of a fan of... If we can find one relatively close, it would be cool. If we can't, we're going to hit that 18... I favor in 27s. Uh, he's on one. A lot of people favor 27s, which is why they're um, going to be a little hard to find. <clears throat> so we cannot kill it. Let me actually just send another fleet out there just so we don't have to uh, come home. We can kind of just keep this whole ball of wax rolling. We'll send our other fleet out there. 
And between the two of them, you'll be able to kill the 27. This guy, let's tell this guy to go right about there. Okay. Right. It's going to warn me and say, hey, <laughs> you know, this is a much higher level than you are. Are you okay with this? And I'm like, yeah, I'm a badass, yo. What's up? So what we're going to do is we're going to take out the ships first. We're going to try to kite the ships. And we can kite all but one of them. One of them has one gun that will outrange us. So what we're looking at is we're looking at this. As they get bigger, more guns will be out here. Forties have guns all the way around. So we're going to kill the ships, and then we need to go in here and try to kill as much as we can. We will die, and then the other fleet will come in and finish this off. Okay, oops. All right. How are we doing? Okay. Packing it all in. That's good. That's good. We're not going to charge them head on. We're just getting a little closer and then we're going to turn and run. Okay. And for that, you need to know how fast you turn. Since I'm ranking up now, I'm actually turning quite a bit faster than I used to be. And I am faster than these ships, so I do have to occasionally stop. And if you remember how to stop, that's the down arrow key. Oops, stop. <clears throat> if you hear me clicking, sometimes I have to click extra because my mouse is messed up. In a humid, if the if it's humid in the ten degree in the house, sometimes it won't register clicks, and sometimes it will double click. See this one that only has three guns? It doesn't just have three guns. That other slot is a torpedo. You just can't see it. I'm going to try to kill this other ship without the torpedo shooting at me. So I really got to stay on the range of um, this other ship. Because each torpedo will just will take, I think, a, either half or more than half of my life. So what I'm doing here is I'm trying to balance my damage. I'm trying to make it so each ship receives some damage, but nobody dies. You see how I got like at least three ships that have taken half damage. But what I'm going to do when I get over here is we're going to lead with our healthy ship so that as we're getting closer, the healthy ship is taking damage. Because once you start losing ships, you start losing firepower. If you can balance out your ships, you retain your complete firepower for longer. So we still have two ships at full life. So I arrowed over, so I'm on number five, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click, and then I'm going to do an up arrow, and then I'm going to click again. So what it does is that's going to make the first ship come out first, and then immediately get all the rest of the ships to follow. So click, up arrow, click. And see, so he's just a hair. We actually might might not be bad to make him come out just a hair further. Okay. So he's leading. I'm going to tell these guys to come here. Now, since I clicked here, they're all going to stack back up again right here. And that's okay, because I want number one to lead after we kill that one ship. And I'm mostly caring about the ballistics. And at this point, we're, we're going to start losing... stuff and that's okay all right and for marauders that's not I don't think that's too bad I think we did pretty good now uh, and I kind of went over that a little fast to show you how much uh, points we got from it 
Sorry about that. You can go back and pause. I can't rewind right this second. That's one of the ways I do these videos is I do them live. I don't edit them. I, I, um, the only editing I do is I might pause it while we're playing if I need to figure something out. So we need to come over here and you'll see how the mortars work. And you got to look really close because diplomatic mortars are really small shells. This is why it's good to have all your ships that go the same speed. Otherwise for these long distances you'll have one ship that's like way back here, one ship that's way up here, and then ships all over the place. I really like to match combat speed. If you have varying ships, varying types of ships, still try to match the combat speed. And try to match the turn speed if you can, but that can be really, really difficult. Okay. So let's aim here. So we'll go here. Stay on our edge so that we'll shoot this guy and hopefully he won't be shooting at us and he may or may not be shooting at us by that point. And remember now, this is mortar, so they're going to throw volleys in the air. What we want is we want two volleys, and I just know this because I've already tried this. I want two volleys per turret. See that one volley? And the second volley. So I want the next one here, and I did the shift click on that one. One volley. Two volleys. Shift click on this one. And I kind of am goofing up because I'm going to be within the minimum range. I'm in the minimum range of that one. All right. Yeah, that worked out pretty good. Didn't even lose half the fleet. Woohoo! Okay, so the last of the turrets was about 3,000. I think the the other stuff, the other ship, picked up about 11,000 points. So 27s, and then another one spawned right after it. So that's nice. 27s are pretty good. Um, but you hit what you can hit. And you can watch other people fight. You can click on, oops, well not that one because he's gone, he's finished it. But you can click on stuff, bases, or cargo, or whatever it is, and you can watch them fight. Uh, that's not a bad thing to do. And you learn you learn different base designs by watching people's bases get hit. You learn what, what works and what's not working. Um, you see, you watch what kind of stuff's on their ships. So this guy has a Vindicator, I think is what it's called, and he probably is using impulse cannons, impulse launchers. Sorry, sorry, they're not cannons. <clears throat> and he is really ranked up. He's ranked up pretty good. See, he's shooting out missiles. So he has um, he has a phalanx, which shoots missiles out of the sky, which is super cool. If these were hard turrets, impulse launchers actually have like an explosion thingy, which is cool. But no, so we would probably almost lose our fleet in here, but he is going to walk out of here with uh, not even like a percentage of damage. <laughs> but that's when your ships get bigger and your weapons get stronger and you, you know, it's just a long range weapon and stuff. So it's. So those are Forsaken missions and those are, you know, a couple other things about the base. So I'm day two and I'm level 21 and I am, might have just made it level 22 almost. Very, very close. Uh, remember, so remember, remove ships until you're down to four. Until you're down to five minutes, do the speed up. Throw them back in there. Do the speed up. The we will get into, we will be getting to fleets very soon where we will be taking them all out and doing them one at a time like that. So, I think that's enough for today. Uh, keep rocking. Keep blowing stuff up and keep, you know, upgrading, researching junk so you can play with it. Okay? Talk to you later. Bye-bye.